Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel. I'm Patty, I go by Patty Mac Makes everywhere online. In today's video, I am going to show you how to make a really fun, really pretty, nine strip, scrappy placemat. <laughs> that's a terrible name, but that's what it is. It's a, a scrappy placemat, I'm calling it a scrappy placemat because what I did was use nine different jelly roll sized strips. So this is what they look like. Uh, I made uh, two different sets. So here's one, and then here is the other one. <clears throat> I made them using the same jelly roll package. This is actually from uh, fabrics I purchased a while ago from Blueprint. And if you wanna see everything I pulled out of my Blueprint stash, I will link to that video for you. Uh, but in today's video, we're just going to look at making these beautiful placemats. What I wound up doing was the uh, strip set for the front, and then on the back I did uh, yardage. And for this one, I went with that print. For this one, I used this print. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> so uh, all from the same fabric collection. So something that uh, I find uh, is the easiest way to make sure all of your bits and pieces will coordinate well is to uh, stick to a fabric collection because if you stay within a collection, everything's gonna work well. Before we jump into actually making the project, let me tell you what I think is really uh, fun about this particular project. It's sewn into three strip sets, which are then pieced together to make one full set. So your fabric that you're sewing from is going to consist of the nine strips. What I think is really fun about this is it um, allows you some experimentation in how you uh, put your, uh, your prints and your colors and everything together. Um, I think what can be challenging in a large project is that, uh, it, first of all, it's a huge commitment, it's a lot of money, and it takes a long time to see everything. Even though you have your um, design board where you can pin your uh, blocks as you go, you're still constructing full blocks, uh, you have large rows, it's just, it's a lot. And so if you want to sort of have a, a, a lower commitment, uh, a less stressful way to uh, allow yourself some freedom and experimenting with colors and uh, prints and all of that, uh, this is a great way to go. And I will also, um, before we jump in, last note, last side note is the napkin. So I sewed uh, coordinating napkins and for that I went with this neutral print and um, we'll make these in a different video. They're their own thing. And uh, I have done dinner napkins before. And in that video, which I will link over to for you right now, um, that one has a mitered corner, which is a, a different kind of a process. I wanted to try something that was even easier. And uh, so I just um, went with a, like a squared corner and to be perfectly honest, I think it's beautiful. I really like it. It was, you know, much easier to do. You know, the miter looks good. It's not terrible with the method I'm using, but uh, you know, it's still some fiddling around and you gotta like make markings and you gotta flip it this way, you gotta flip it that way. And you know, with this, <laughs> you're just using your seam gauge and making your hem and they're beautiful. And um, for these, I used yardage and I cut them at 20 by 20, which is a lot of fabric, but it makes a beautiful napkin. And that's how I did these. For the video that I'm going to make for you uh, on how to do the technique, we're gonna use fat quarters. Okay, without any further ado, let's jump into the actual video and uh, make this project. To make today's placemat project, we will need a cutting mat, a rotary cutter, a six and a half by 24 and a half inch quilting ruler. If you're cutting your own strips, I recommend a two and a half by 24 and a half inch quilting ruler, wonder clips or pins, a sewing machine, an iron and ironing board or press mat, fabric scissors, thread snips, a one quarter inch presser foot, a walking foot, and a point turner. 
The supplies that you'll need to make today's scrappy placemat are as follows. Nine jelly roll strips, and you'll need about three quarters of a yard of a coordinating fabric for your backing, and you will want about three quarters of a yard of fusible quilt batting, and of course you will need thread. As I mentioned, this project is made in three sets of three. So the first step is to figure out what you want to go where. So I have decided I'm going to put those three together and then these three together and then these three together. And this will make the colorful top of my placemat. So the first thing I'll do is just piece a set of three, a set of three, and a set of three. And then when I have those three together, I'll come back and join them all together. All the strips are pieced together and I want you to see the wrong side of the work so that you can see all of the seams have been pressed to one direction. And when you press your seams to one side or the other, it gives you a stronger seam. So when you come through and quilt, like I quilt stitch in the ditch, so essentially when I'm stitching, I'm stitching uh, into this uh, seam where the ends are to one side, the seam allowance. It's going to make a little bit of a stronger seam and that's what we want, especially in a placemat, which is going to be washed frequently. And then here we can see the uh, right side of our work and I just think it's beautiful. So, okay, all of our strips are together. And as I said in the beginning, what we would do is uh, piece our three, piece our three, piece our three, and then put those three together. Everything is together, and now we can square this up and cut it down to the uh, size that we'll need for the front of our placemat. So for cutting, because we are going to use the width of the nine strips, we don't have to cut that. All we have to do is cut so that it's 12 and a half inches uh, wide. So the first thing we have to do is to even up because you can see at the end where we've pieced everything, um, they're not quite the same. So what I do is to take this center line on my quilting ruler and I find um, the middle seam that I can line up to and I'm going to use that as my, my edge. And we're going to take this off and then I'm going to line that straight edge up to one of these lines on the cutting mat and count the 12 and a half inches and then we'll cut that piece. So <laughs> super easy. Once you get your first cut, it's pretty easy to get the rest of them. Now, if you wanted, there's enough here that you could do a third placemat, but I find that generally when you're making placemats, you do them in evens. Uh, so you could do the three, or what I'm going to do is save this one with the other placemat set that I made, and we're going to do a whole other project. So you'll want to stay tuned for that. So save your leftover strip, which is a really good size, and we'll make something else uh, in an upcoming video. So the next steps of what we'll do is to affix the fusible quilt batting to the what I'm going to call the quilt top or the front of our placemat. Just follow your manufacturer's instructions. I always use a press cloth so I don't get any of that glue on my iron. And once you have the fusible affixed to your scrappy top, then we're going to square up the whole piece. Then we will cut whatever fabric we want to use as our backing. And once our backing is cut, then we will place the piece uh, right sides together. Make sure that you leave or mark a spot 
for an opening large enough to get your hand inside. So all the way around, leaving that opening using a quarter inch seam allowance. Take the weight then out of the corners so that your corners will be sharper. Turn your work inside out. Use the point turner to make nicer corners and to open all of your seams. Then press everything into place. When you do the pressing, make sure that you press the seam allowance inward where you turned the work. It will naturally want to go inward, but give it a press to put it into place. Then take your stitching out to about three millimeters. You can go three and a half if you like a longer stitch. I generally get three millimeters. And then edge stitch all the way around the project. The edge stitching will not only dress up the look of your placemat, it will also simultaneously close the opening where you turned the work. All that's left once you've done that is to then actually do the quilting. And I typically do stitch in the ditch. I'm going to do stitch in the ditch on this piece. I think it looks nice. That's what I'm going to go with, but you can quilt however you desire. That is completely up to you. So do your quilting. And the reason I do the quilting at the very, very last is because when you do it this way, you are securing the front of the work to the back. And so as the placemats are used and laundered, and you know, I'm not precious with any of my uh, placemats and things that I make. I run everything through the laundry and the dryer. So by having the front and the back sewn together, the placemat will stay in shape and then you can launder it every week. And of course it will need to be repressed. So you just press it back out before you go to use it on the table and it will look as good as new. The thing with the placemats is I kind of make them all the same. So I will make the, um, what I consider the quilt top, which is the small front. Uh, we're going to do the piecing. We're going to get all that together. We put the fusible quilt batting and then sew it together with that fabric backing, bada bing, bada boom, all done. No quilt binding, none of that. You know, we all have this like love hate with the quilt binding. I think it's challenging. I think the quilt binding, getting that right is the hardest part of the whole quilt. And it's frustrating because it's the last thing you do. <laughs> and if you mess that up, you know, all of your work is just like, ugh, you know. So to me, the joy in making the placements the way that I'm sharing with you with just doing that edge stitching is no quilt binding. So believe you me, we're going to see a lot more placements done this way. It's, I'm just gonna, you know, give you the heads up now. Okay, that's all. That's what I have for you this time. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you will make the project because it is beautiful and you can just personalize this any way you choose. It's really fun. I think that's the beauty of the project. It's what you have in your stash. It's what you like the best. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye.